My name is Pierre Bonnet. I'm a botanist working at the French Research Center in Agriculture for Development. And I'm uh, pleased to present you today the recent work that we conduct in my research group on the development of a global plant species identification services. As you know, World Flora is huge and we are lucky to have the large investment of consortia who aggregated huge volume of visual and textual information describing plant species at the world level. Nevertheless, a broad, rapid and easy access to this data require knowledge of the name of the taxa, usually the species to which it refer. To enable as many people as possible to benefit from this enormous knowledge, we need to reduce the level of expertise required to access them, develop the fastest and cheapest possible means of access, ensure that most of the available data is used to this end, and facilitate the commitment of as many partners as possible to this objective. This is why we have developed since more than 10 years a collaborative learning platform for monitoring plant biodiversity. Our main objective is to develop uh, scientific instruments as a powerful tool for researchers, managers and for training activities, widely accessible, developed in a collaborative manner, as much attractive as possible, open and as much interoperable as possible, available online as well offline in order to uh, allow its, its wide access in remote condition. This platform, since its beginning, has allowed the diffusion of more than 13 million of plant occurrence on JBIF, more than 80% of them based on AI identification and 13% of them by human identification in confirmation. In order to evaluate machine learning methods for image-based plant species identification, we conduct since 2011 an international challenge in the context of the CLEF initiative, which allows us each year to compare some of the best methods uh, that could be used for plant species identification. Each year we try to increase the difficulty of the task that we propose in this challenge, which has allowed us to measure the progression of the machine learning techniques for such task. In 2018, we were able to evaluate the impact of noisy data uh, when they are used by deep learning uh, methods for image-based plant species identification. Here, for example, in Orange, you have techniques that were based on both AOL data and crawl of the web data. And as we can see, uh, most of them are much better than uh, methods that were based on trusted data only. In 2018, too, we were able to compare the expertise of uh, human botanists and uh, some of the best methods that were tested during this challenge this year. And as you can see in orange, all the methods that uh, were evaluated were very close to some of the best experts who participate to this challenge this year. So more than six years ago, already um, deep learning methods were quite close to human expertise for plant species identification based on image analysis. This year, during uh, challenge that was dedicated to assess the state-of-the-art approaches at a very large scale, we saw the major benefits of using visual transformer that can reach best accuracy for such tasks compared to convolutional neural networks, which were some of the most promising techniques developed uh, in the past few years. According to that result, 
we uh, decide to uh, update PlantNet platform based on this new type of architecture. And since June 2023, we use a bait model in production in PlantNet. Uh, we also work since more than two years on the evaluation and the implementation of two international standards to improve the capacity of the platform. We take advantage of the World Plan Checklist Plant of the World Online, maintained and shared by Q uh, Royal Botanical Gardens, and also the WGS RPD standards developed by uh, Stadwick and dedicate to share world geographical schema for recording plant distribution. By using this BOST international standards, we were able to propose an access to 52 distinct flora uh, designed at the subcontinental level that uh, are based on level one and two of this uh, of the WGSRPD standards. For all this flora, uh, we are able to illustrate it around 43,000 plant species and provide an access to this plant species identification services in more than 47 different languages. In order to extend the benefits of the PlantNet platform, we provide since 2020 an access to the PlantNet API, which allow us to manage uh, an, uh, a secure API with encrypt key to provide developer pragmatic access to PlantNet services to monitor the consumption and to allow a free and unlimited access for non-profit educational and scientific purpose to these plant species identification services. Some example of codes to request such uh, uh, API is uh, provided on GitHub in different uh, languages. Up to now, we count uh, more than 8,000 uh, users of this API. We have managed around 11 million of uh, query over the past four years, with some peak of use of 20,000 plant identification daily requested per account. As you can see on the right of this, uh, of this screen, um, very different end users of this API embedded in their website, such as for Calflora or the website of the Royal Horticultural Society in, uh, in England. People who also develop a mobile apps, such as beekeepers, or application developed by a Willow company here. And we also have a quite uh, intense use for scientific purpose, such as in the case of the work conduct by uh, Nadja Pernat uh, in the context of the um, uh, cost action uh, on uh, alien uh, species monitoring. This API allows us since uh, around one year to uh, evaluate its usage for new context, such as for the images of standard quadrat as illustrated on the left here, for roadside view in order to uh, uh, try detection of invasive species on such view, and also on aerial views uh, produced by uh, drone during drone flights. And I will finish my presentation with an introduction of GeoPlantNet which is a new interface on which we work in order to take advantage of the deep SDM, so species distribution model based on deep learning techniques that allow us to make prediction at the continental scale. Here uh, at present time we work on European scale in order to share uh, plant species distribution maps and infer some biodiversity indicators infer from the plant community that we are able to predict uh, using these uh, deep learning methods. 
Thank you very much for your attention and I will be pleased to respond to any of your questions. Thanks a lot.